And you know, when I when I first got into business, I thought it was, you know, I'm sure I got into business for probably the same reason you did. You know, I'm going to make way more money. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, after I realized that that ship had sailed, <laughs> um, I started looking at why I'm doing this. My why became my purpose. Mm, I love that. And you know what? There's a great book written by Simon Sinek called Starting the Start with Why. And, you know, it was a real eye opener for me. And I would recommend that to your audience. Pick up the book. It's a small book. It doesn't take long to read it. But man, I'll tell you, it's important. Welcome to Small Business Pivots, a podcast designed for small business owners. I'm your host, Michael Morrison, a small business consulting coach and founder of Boss, where we make business ownership simplified for success so you can create a business that works without you. To learn more, go to businessownershipsimplified.com. And make sure to hang out to the end of the show for my recap and Coach's Corner, where I challenge you to take action on one thing that will move the needle in your business. Our guest today is Randy Crane, also known as the Fearless Marketer. Randy is a nationally recognized sales and marketing specialist. He has held leadership positions in sales and marketing for over 40 years with global brands such as Molson Coors, Konica Minolta, among others, as well as many thriving startups. Today, Randy shares his passion for leadership and marketing strategies that deliver customer value and business impact. Randy has been quoted as saying, yes, it's important to have a website. More importantly, the person developing the website must have a clear understanding of marketing. Otherwise, it's just pretty pictures on the web. Randy helps business owners and entrepreneurs turn clicks into clients. Let's get to Randy now to learn how to grow your business with better marketing and sales. Welcome to another Small Business Pivots podcast. We have a very special guest today that has taken time out of his day-to-day to help small business owners create a business that can run without them for more profit and freedom. Today, sir, introduce your name. No one can say it like you can. (laughs) <laughs> My name is Randy Crane. And you and have a what kind of company? I have a, uh, a marketing firm. And uh, I've been in business since uh, 1993. Um, my company is called Fearless Marketer Media, and I am the fearless marketer. Yes, you are. <laughs> We've already had discussion. and, and We have. Folks, our listeners, you are in for a treat, so I hope you're buckled up. <laughs> So let's get started. So the purpose of the show is to help small business owners that might be stuck, maybe trying to get to the next level and just can't get over that hump. And I know from your experiences and conversation we had earlier that you've done that and more, and you've got words of wisdom just waiting to be shared. So let's get started. Where would you like to start? Well, you know, I think I want to start at probably the most tender part of any business which is lack of sales. I mean, let's face it, every business, I don't care how big or how small that small business is, are always trying to get over that hump of, I I need more sales. I need to make more money. I need to, I need more. I need more. So I think that's probably a great place to start. Well, so for sales, I know several avenues from personal experience. Sometimes you can get too much sales and go in the red because you don't have the infrastructure to support those sales. And I agree with you that most most small business owners, they're always looking for that next sale and not taking care of what they already have. So let's dive into that because you're a marketing uh, guy. So let's get into how they can uh, maybe improve their sales process. Well, you know, I think one of the biggest things, Michael, is, and you know, you and I talked about this, getting out of the taking mindset and getting into the giving mindset. You know, when you're looking for customers, people want to work with people that they like to work with. People like to work with people that they trust. So the whole theory of people buy from who they know, like, and trust, well, if they, if they don't know you, they're not going to buy from you. If they don't like you, they absolutely are not going to buy from you. So it really comes down to the trust factor. So how do we develop trust? Trust is developed through the process of giving and taking, giving and taking. 
And because you're the salesperson, you need to be the one to start the giving. So what do you give? You give value that is relational to them. In other words, it's not your perceived value. It's what they perceive as value. That could be a, a, it could be a tip to help them in their business. It could be a, a story that you, that happened uh, a couple of years ago that it might benefit that person by knowing it. And this is what's called building a relationship. The same kind of relationship that you have with your children, the same kind of relationship you have with your friends, same kind of relationship you may have with your wife. Okay, a relationship is you want to be able to get that conversation moving in both directions. And we do this by a process of giving and taking. That's great advice. And I know one of the questions I can already hear it from a small business <laughs> owner would be, how do we do that when we're marketing, though? How do we get that message out? Because everybody says, write good quality content, and they've been doing it and doing it and but it's not working. Okay. First of all, it comes down to, and I, I'm going to give you an acronym here, KYC. Know your customer. If I'm meeting with you, Michael, one-on-one, -on -one, and you and I are just talking. And you know what? It's funny because, you know, just going back to what we were doing in the pre-show, uh, pre okay? And we developed a conversation. And I think you're a hell of a nice guy. And I'm sure you think I'm a hell of a nice guy. So there's connection between the two of us. There's magnetism here. Electricity going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything has different degrees. But if you don't have that connection with people, it's not going to work in your favor. So know your customer. Get out and talk to your customers. Find out what their interests are you know when i go into a I, when i go in to see a customer and, and actually before i get into that every person in the world maybe not every person but most salespeople always want to close the sale close it fast okay get on to the next one. make the commission it's not a good way to be don't be in a rush to close the sale. I mean, when, when I go out to see a customer, it's, it's usually, uh, I usually figure it's like going to be a three-day close on this. Yeah. Because the first conversation I'm going to have with you, Michael, is I'm going to have a conversation about you. And I, I may sit down at your desk and I'll say, oh, my God, Michael, is that, I love that art on the back wall. Can you tell me about that? Or I may see a picture of your wife and kids and say, oh, my God, what a beautiful family. You want to tell me about that? Or I can look up in the wall and I can see, oh, my God, you got a sign there that says um, boss business ownership. Do you want to tell me about that? I want to get you talking about you. And you're going to tell me some stuff. And I'm going to say, oh, you know what, Michael? I used to know a guy and he does this. Oh, I know that guy. Now the conversation is flowing. Meanwhile, I'm making notes. I'm making notes about you. And then I want to start delivering some value based on the information that I've... Now, it doesn't have to be value like a checklist or a, a, um, a, a lead or anything like that. It just has to be something that you perceive as valuable. Maybe it's a tip to help you in your business. Maybe it's a contact that I have. Maybe it's... Um, Maybe it is a checklist. Maybe it is a uh, an email template or something, whatever it is, okay? Maybe it's something that can help you with your family. Maybe it's something that can help you with your car. I don't know. It depends on how the conversation goes. But you see, if I'm delivering value to you, now the end of the call is going to come around or the end of the meeting is going to come around. You're going to say to me, Randy, what is all this marketing going to cost? And I'm going to say, Jesus, Michael, I have no idea. I really don't know. But I'll tell you what, why don't we have another meeting tomorrow? And maybe by then I'll be, have a better idea. But you see, I've delivered value. So now I'm hopefully you're going to be excited to talk to me again. Maybe I'm going to be a little bit more inspirational to you. Maybe, or maybe I'm just going to be a feel-good guy. So I'm going to come back the next day and I'm going to talk to you again. And I'm going to say to you, hey, listen, Michael, 
we're gonna I'm gonna ask you some questions, you're gonna give me some answers, and I'm gonna start delivering more value. And then you're gonna say to me, Well, Randy, how much is this all gonna cost on this geez, You know what? Why don't we meet on Thursday? And by then I should have a proposal together for you. When we meet on Thursday, process again. I ask you questions, you give me answers, and I start delivering more value. So by the time the end of that third meeting rolls around, and it doesn't have to be three, it just happens to be my the way I do it. After that meeting, you should be at the point where you're, you feel so confident in who I am and my ability to deliver that you're saying, Randy, I don't even care what it is, just tell me what to write the check for. And that is how you sell. You sell based on the value you deliver. If you're not valuable to somebody, why would I do business with you? I'm sorry, that might have been a long story. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. I was just sitting here thinking about my process, and I always like to share from personal experience as well. And I'll I'll validate what you're talking about. I know when I meet with someone that's reached out to me or I've reached out to them, every we'll say meet up, if you will. Uh, I'm always listening to what can I give them? Like I want to at least, is it a referral or, or maybe their car's broke and I know a good mechanic. It doesn't even have to be business related, but I, in my head, I go into every meeting, make sure I give them one thing. And if I say I'm going to follow up, let them know when and then follow up. That's you know what, my, my first friend, process. So I agree with you. It, it's totally, I'm totally on with you with this because there's an old saying that comes from uh, Zig Ziglar. Okay. Do you remember Zig Ziglar? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just didn't want you saying, who the hell is Zig uh, No, okay, I, anyway. yeah, I, I guess, yeah. for, unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know. But yes, I do know. He said, the fortune is in the follow-up. And you see, small business owners do the, always do, I, they don't always do, but they, they have a tendency to do, is they make the presentation and then drop the ball, thinking that the presentation was enough. It's never going to be enough. It's going to be that relentless follow-up. The emails, the text messages, the... Uh, the phone calls, so whatever it is that you need to do to close that sale. Because if you think somebody is just going to lay down because you're a pretty face, it just isn't going to happen. Or because you have some revolutionary idea, it, it just doesn't work that way. The plan comes in, is into the follow-up, how you follow up with that person. I was reading an article by the uh, American uh, Advertising Association not so long ago. And they were saying that the average business owner needs to have 15 to 18 touch points before they'll make a decision. Wow. So what's a touch point? That's a phone call. It's an email. It's a text message. It's a meet and greet. It's maybe a separate, another meeting. It could be a networking meeting. It could be any of those things. It could be a letter you send by carrier pigeon up to 18 touch points before they make a decision. Now, each year, that number always seems to rise. So uh, I remember back in the uh, the 90s, it was like six to seven. And yeah. you know when it came to the 2000s, it was more like uh, 10 to 12. Now it's grown again. Yeah. Because I think people are more leery. They need more time to digest their decisions. And this is where value, if you're delivering good value, and the customer believes you. You know, you mentioned something a little earlier about, um, you know, you might know a mechanic or you might know a lead or something like that that you could give them. You know, at 64 years old, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I become like everybody's go-to guy. <laughs> You're resourceful. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. So I got a guy, I got a call from a guy last year and uh, a friend of mine, Bob Clark, and Bob said to me, he said, you know, Randy, do you know, uh, do you know anybody in Arkansas that sells real estate? And I said, I really don't. But I said, I have an ex-brother-in-law who lives in Arkansas. He lives in Bentonville. He says, well, this is in Lafayette. I said, well, look, I said, I'll call him and I'll find out and I'll let you know. So I called my brother-in-law and I said to him, I said, look, you know, do you have a, 
real estate agent. Uh, he says, uh, well, I know a guy who handles down in Lafayette. And he says, here's his name and number. So I uh, called up my friend Bob Clark and I said to him, Here, here's the name and number. He said, well, thanks very much. A while goes by and I turn around and I get a check in the mail. And I don't know who this check is from. So I did a little bit of research and they found out that uh, this is a guy's name down in uh I don't know. It wasn't even a Lafayette. It was just another town. And, uh, I called him up. I said, did you make a mistake in sending me a check? He said, no, 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 Randy, I didn't. He says, I got your name from Bob. Bob put me in touch with this guy who turns out to be an investor. Hmm. And he says, I made a million dollars on this. He says, I just thought it would be nice to send you a, a check in the mail. Now, does that happen every day? No. But when something like that happens, and it will happen if you do, if you stay consistent with what you do, be in the business of serving others, be in the business of serving others, because that's what this all comes down to. I totally agree. And you hit a couple of points there. One is you weren't expecting anything back by taking the time to do that. And no. relating that to sales with prospects, if you go into that thinking the same way, you're not expecting to get anything that, that works out better than having this business book that has this sales framework or funnel and you follow it, you know, to the T expecting outcomes. That's a lot harder on the mind, well, you and know, the heart, soul. What you're, what you're saying is right. And you see, the whole idea of expectation and you know i'm sure this is something that you can relate to you've been in business long enough i'm sure you have it's a sales guy who sits on his butt all week long and doesn't do anything but you know what i got this one deal that's going to close on friday so he sits around all week long and then friday rolls around and he makes that call and say hey john i'm coming down today and what does the client say john what does he say, Mike? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was sitting there going, I'm surprised he even answered. <laughs> like, usually it's crickets. <laughs> You're listening to Small Business Pivots. This podcast is sponsored by Boss, where business ownership is simplified for success. Boss helps business owners create a business that runs without them with business consulting services, business loans, free education, and much, much more. Go to businessownershipsimplified.com to learn why small business success starts with boss. If you're enjoying the podcast and want to stay up to date with all of our latest episodes, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up or leave a positive review. Your support means the world to us and it helps others discover the show too. Thanks for tuning in. Now let's get back to our guest. The guy turns around and he says, ah, oh, you know what? I just need some more time to think about it. Oh, you know what? I don't think, I think we're going to go in a different direction. There's no way he'll make that close because A, he doesn't have enough in the pipeline and B, he has that expectation. You know, it's like when you, when you meet with a salesperson that doesn't, that is there for the money. They don't have to say they're there for the money. They don't have to say they're there to make a commission. They don't, they don't have to say anything. It could be the look in their eye. It could be the way they sit. It could be that stupid little smirk on their, on their face. <laughs> yeah. But something is going to tell you, and it's going to scream at you to back away. Human beings connect with other human beings. We connect on, on elect, on, with electricity. It's like, you know, you go out to the park and you, you, you get this funny feeling that somebody's staring at you and you turn around and somebody staring at you. Yeah. How did you know that without looking at? It? Well, you just knew. And every pre every person experienced that at one time in their life. Those same rules apply in sales. And coming back to marketing, marketing is nothing more than the sales experience expanded to a wider audience. If you don't know cus if you don't know your customer, you can't sell your customer. So when I do a marketing campaign, I, I go in and I meet with my client. Then I talk with their clients. And then I want to talk to their employees. And then I want to talk to their prospects. And I have a whole series of questions that I ask these people because I want to understand 
why you bought from them, why you haven't bought from them. What is it about the company you like? What is it about the company you don't like? What about the com- What is it about the company that you like so well that you would keep you coming back over and over and over again? And then from there, I built an avatar. An avatar is a, a person that represents that ideal customer. Because if I'm going to write content for Steve, I have to be able to talk to a person. So I'll sit down and I'll write a story. Okay. Uh, my story is about Michael Morrison. And uh, he's a handsome guy who has a wife and a few kids. And he lives in uh, Oklahoma City and he does this for a living. And he has this kind of education. And this is what his personality is like. And this is what his wife's personality is. And these are the problems that they have. Because you see, it's the problems that everybody is connected to. Mm-hmm. Every human being in the world is connected to their problems in life. Every single one. On that same note, every single person is emotionally connected to their wants and their needs and their desires. So when I want to talk to a prospect, I want to talk to them in terms of them. What is it you need? What is it you want? What is it by me sitting here with you? What is it that I can do for you that will make your life so much better? You see, when you start building that out into an avatar, it starts to formulate. Now, when I turn around and I go on Google and I say, geez, you know, I found a picture of Michael Morrison. Oh my God, he looks like just like the avatar I wrote about. I'm going to take that picture and I'm going to put it up on my wall. So now when I'm talking when I'm writing my copy, I'm talking to you. You don't. I don't need to have your mouth moving. I need you to. I need to be able to picture who that person is, and I need to understand what you're emotionally connected to. Because human beings connect with the things that they're emotionally connected to. Okay. If you, if I'm sitting in front of you and I'm trying to make a sale happen. And I, and you know, Michael, I know you know this sales pitch, so I'm just going to give it to you. Hi, Michael. My name is Randy Crane, and I'm with uh, uh, Business Ownership. And we've been in business for 20 years, and we have the best people, the best price, the best product, the best service, the best guarantee, the best warranty, the best delivery, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Nobody gives a crap about any of that. Oh, it might be nice to know but it's certainly not going to inspire you to buy from me. So if that's not what's going to inspire you to buy from me, then what will? Well, every person's different. What's Michael Morrison emotionally connected to? Is he emotionally connected to his problem right now? Is he emotionally connected to his wants or his needs? Or is he emotionally connected with his desires in life? Which is it? And which, or which combination of those things? Because the only way I'm going to know that is to ask you questions. You mean if I ask you a great question, I'm going to get great answers. So I'm not just going to come into your office and say, Michael, um, tell me, what do you, what do you desire? You're going to look at me like I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's too much information. But I'm going to pull that, I'm going to pull that information from you. Because you want to give it. I'm going to ask you questions in a certain way that's going to draw those questions, that's going to draw those answers out. So when it comes time for me to close the sale and I can turn around, I can say, well, Michael, didn't you tell me this? Yeah. Well, great. Let's do it. Oh, no, I need to think about it. Well, what do you need to think about? Didn't you tell me this? Yeah. Didn't you tell me that? Yeah. Didn't you tell me you wanted this? Yeah. Didn't you tell me you wanted that? Yeah. Didn't you want to tell me all of these? Didn't it? T- didn't you tell me that it, just the idea of having this would make you feel great? Yeah. Then what are you waiting for? Let's feel great together. You know, people forget this stuff. And this is rudimentary sales 101. The answers you get from the questions you ask or you're closing is how you close the sale. That's the important thing to remember. So marketing, marketing is just on a larger scale. And this is where research comes into play. Yeah. I don't recall who I 
heard this from or read it, uh, but I thought I've never forgotten it. And I thought it was just, it inspired me, but he was basically saying, while you're sitting there doing your keyword research, while you're sitting there trying to figure out algorithms and while you're trying to do all this other stuff, don't forget the person that's buying. There's, there's a human on the other side of that screen. Like right. don't forget about that's the technical stuff, but don't forget about the human because even on Amazon, humans are buying. It, you know what? And everybody wants to make this a technical thing. Chat GPT does not replace human. No. Okay. It can assist, but it's not going to replace a human. Okay. At least not in years of my life. You know, the human brain processes 40 billion bits of information per second. Chat GPT processes 4 million bits a second per minute. Mm. Okay. That's a huge stretch. Where does that bring us to? Well, you know, I, I think the thing is, is that people need to focus on what, find out what the strengths of your product or the service that you provide and serve your customer. Serve them. Don't take serve. Just always remember that you'll make more by serving than you will from taking. Another mentor of mine, he often said, sales are not done when they sign on the dotted line. <laughs> They're not done until they leave you, your cell, like you serve, like it, it doesn't, you don't really close the deal. You may have made an arrangement or agreement, but the sale's not done until they leave you or you leave them, always serve them. And I love what you're saying. That kind of aligns. Absolutely. With that. You know, I, I just, like I said, I, I can only look at my own history. And, you know, when I when I first got into business, I thought it was, you know, I'm sure I got into business for probably the same reason you did. You know, I'm going to make way more money. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, after I realized that that ship had sailed, <laughs> um, I started looking at why I'm doing this. My why became my purpose. Mm. I love that. And you know what? There's a great book written by Simon Sinek called Starting Start With Why. And, you know, it was a real eye-opener for me, and I would recommend that to your audience. and Pick up the book. It's yeah. a small book. It doesn't take long to read it. But, man, I'll tell you, it's in power. It's, it's good. We start as a business coach. When we start with any business owner, we start with their purpose statement. Like, why are oh, you yeah. doing this? Like, why do you get up every morning to serve people? Like, I want to know inside why you're doing what you're doing. Oh, you know what? Without a doubt, you know, somebody said to me today, and actually somebody did say to me just the other day, they said, uh, how do you feel about what you do? Hmm. And I said, buddy, I love it. I get up every day. I get to talk with interesting people. I get to enjoy. I work from home. I mean, how cool is that? Okay. I'm not slaving at an office every day. I don't even have to wear a suit anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on, Michael. That's got to be a big win for both of us, right? Absolutely. Freedom. Absolutely. So, you know, and, you know, it, it's funny, too, because I get opportunities to uh, you know, if you looked at my website, I've, I've got a history with uh, Salesforce and uh, Ben and Jerry's and and uh, Bank of America and Royal Bank of Canada. You know, I turn that work down today. Mm. I don't want to deal with the big corporate lifestyle. Yeah. You know what? And for anybody who's worked in the corporate world, I don't need to tell you how that how that works. Yeah, I guarantee there's a lot of people that can relate. And so for me, I, you know, I, I really try to stay, I like working with smaller businesses because when they, when they get a great result, they're ready to party. Okay. They love it. I had a client a little while ago. We ran a social media campaign and he had already had three other social media people. And, um, what he does is he'll hire a social media guy. And if they're not, um, if they're not uh, posting that same day, okay, like he'll tell them, you know, I'm going to give you two weeks, get posting. And um, they all fail. 
So he calls me up and he says to me, I don't understand why they all fail. I said, well, I'll tell you why. I said, a guy who wants to build a website, he calls up a web designer. He says, hey, can you build me a website? Oh, yeah, I can build a website for you in two days. Great. I need a guy who can build, uh, who can do social media. Oh, yeah, I can, I can start posting tomorrow. What do they know about your business? Right. What do they know about your business? You don't start with a social media campaign, you end with one. You don't start with a website, you end with one. Okay, so what makes it different? A guy who can produce a website in two days doesn't care about your business. He cares about getting the money for your business, for that project. But is that website going to convert sales? No. Well, why wouldn't it? Because they don't know anything about your business. So the web designer comes back to you and he says, well, listen, it's your business. You need to write the content. What does a business owner know about writing content, number one? And if they're in, a, in business for the very first time, what do they really know about their business? And do they have time to do that? No. All those answers are no. So the whole concept. So when somebody says to me, well, how long will it take you to create a website? Well, I'm going to create a website in 60 to 90 days. But I'm going to know more about your business than you probably you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I want that website to convert customers. I want when somebody goes to that website, I want them to feel engaged. I don't need a website that says, here, look at me, look at me, buy from me, which is what most websites do. I want that website so when the customer comes to my site, they feel engaged, they feel comfortable, they feel tr that they can trust who I am. Otherwise, what are we doing, Michael? We're putting brochures on, on the web. Yeah. In which case, you don't have to spend $5,000 for that. You know, just get uh, uh, one of those automatic website designers and, you know, uh, with ChatGPT and away you go. Yeah. But it's not going to convert anything because it requires that research. It requires that human interaction. And there's no getting around it. Yeah, that's that's all good stuff. How you mentioned your website. Share a little bit about your company, your website, how they can get a hold of you. Sure. Um we're actually just in the process of launching a new website. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um I always tell people I'm kind of like the carpenter. You yeah. know, the carpenter goes out and makes beautiful rec rooms for people and builds beautiful houses. But have you ever looked at his garage? Right. Just like disaster. Okay, so that's yes. me. Yeah. Um, that's so because you're in the business of serving others and not yourself. I'll oh. I'll cover for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, you can reach out to me through my website, uh, www.fearlessmarketer.com, or you can email me at randy at fearlessmarketer.com. Okay. And I'm I'm on just about every social media platform. And, hey. You can always reach out to me there. I, I answer my own. So if you have questions, I'm more than happy to help. Well, you've been a wealth of knowledge. I wish we could talk more, uh, but we're about out of time. And we never even got to your your story, but uh, maybe we'll catch back up again. But is there any, if you were to have a room of small business owners, any final words of this is what I would tell all of them just through your experiences, your journey? Be of service to others. Okay. Don't be of service to yourself. Remember, when you serve others, the money will follow. Absolutely. Follow your passion and serve others. That's good. Absolutely. Words of wisdom. Randy, I appreciate your time. You've been awesome. Thank you so much, Michael, for having me on your show. I'm being really excited about being here. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for joining us on this eye-opening journey with Randy Crane, the fearless marketer. Recapping our time together, we unlocked the secrets to revolutionizing your approach to sales, emphasizing the power of generosity and empathy in every customer interaction. A great book to read in regard to this concept is The Go-Giver, co-authored by Bob Berg and John David Mann. As we close this episode, I urge you to seize the actionable advice we shared. It's not enough to simply listen. True growth comes from implementation. 
So here's your challenge from our Coach's Corner. Choose one tangible action item inspired by Randy's insights and commit to executing it in your business today. Find or create one thing of value you can give to every person you have a conversation with. Be a giver. And finally, read the go-giver. Whether it's refining your message to speak directly to your customer's heart or adopting a mindset of service first in every transaction, take that leap towards building a business that not only survives but thrives in the long run. Remember, the path to success is paved with continuous learning and action. Learn to earn. Stay fearless, stay focused, and keep igniting the spark of transformation in your business. Thank you for listening to Small Business Pivots. Please don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. If your business is stuck or you need help creating your business to run without you, go to our website, businessownershipsimplified.com and schedule a free consultation to learn why business success starts with boss. If you have a guest or topic suggestion for our podcast or just want to talk anything small business related, email me at michael at michaeldmorrison.com. We'll see you next time on Small Business Pivots.